Mm -hmm. This king of horror sure can create some amazing characters. <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Stephen King movie characters. I'm going to twist your back like mine so you'll never get out of bed again. <laughs> Never get out of bed again! For this list, we're taking a look at the most memorable and popular movie characters that are based on Stephen King's work. We're limiting our choices to one per release, however. Television miniseries that have subsequently come to be seen as films are up for consideration as well. Come on up, Richie. I got a balloon for you. <laughs> <laughs> In order to outline exactly what makes these characters so memorable, though, we may have to expose some plot details. So consider this your spoiler alert. I've seen you before. You're the asshole on TV. That's funny, I was gonna say the same thing about you. Number 10, Ben Richards, The Running Man. Killian, I'll be back. This sci-fi action flick is full of over-the-top villains, like Professor Sub-Zero, Buzzsaw, Fireball and Captain Freedom, and the fantastically evil host, Damon Killian, who is played by the normally kissable Richard Dawson. What's the matter, steroids make you deaf? But it's still the hero that made the final cut, with just plain awesome lines like this. But I hope you leave enough room for my fist because I'm going to ram it into your stomach and break your goddamn spine! It became an absolute no-brainer to choose Ben Richards. Brought to the big screen by Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime, Ben dispatches his enemies in unique and creative ways, while throwing out lines with the type of zeal that only Arnold could get away with. I'm not into politics, I'm into survival. In short, he is the man. The Running Man. Well, that hit the spot. Number 9, Mrs. Carmody, The Mist. He points the finger, this Judas in our midst. Even when holed up in a grocery store surrounded by giant lethal insects, humanity's dark side can still rear its ugly head. The day I need a friend like you, I'll just have myself a little squat and shit one out. As the danger ratchets up outside, one woman named Mrs. Carmody manages to turn the bulk of the populace inside into what's basically a lynch mob that's willing to do anything to appease her and their god. Oh, you, you take that up with the devil when you run into him. You just chat it over at your leisure. Through impassioned speeches that blame the plague that has befallen them on the misdeeds of others, this religious fanatic from the 2007 sci-fi horror flick becomes a self-styled cult leader during the town's moment of crisis, with the power of life and death at her fingertips. They piss on us and laugh. Follow her or be sacrificed. It's from them. The blood of human sacrifice must come. Number 8. Chris Chambers, Stand By Me. I'm never gonna get out of this town, am I, Corey? Stephen King is best known for his tales of outright terror, but his true fans will know he is equally talented at crafting dramatic stories as well. Chris Chambers never misses, does he? <laughs> Not even when the ladies leave the seat down. Chris is one of four boys on the precipice of becoming men at the center of this film that has arguably become the preeminent coming-of-age story. You're gonna be a great writer someday, Gordy. You might even write about us guys if you ever get hard up for material. Born on the wrong side of the tracks, he is absolutely loyal to his friends, and as such, serves as the heart and soul of the adventure drama. You want to be the Lone Ranger or the Cisco Kid? Played perfectly by River Phoenix, Chambers has our full attention throughout. Even beside stars like Kiefer Sutherland, John Cusack, and a young Will Wheaton and Jerry O'Connell. It's not funny! What am I supposed to eat? Number 7. Ellis Boyd, Red Redding, The Shawshank Redemption. Forty years I've been asking permission to piss. I can't squeeze a drop without say so. Considered one of the best films of all time, The Shawshank Redemption's greatest strength is arguably its relatable characters. Every man has his breaking point. Choosing just one character from this drama was difficult, as both Andy Dufresne and Brooks Hatlin could have easily made it. Easy peasy, Japanesey. But in the end, it was our trusty narrator Red who stole our hearts. I have to remind myself that some birds aren't meant to be caged. Their feathers are just too bright. In his parole hearings, we first witness a desperate man trying to say what he thinks they want to hear, before we see Red mature into a man at peace with himself. That kid's long gone. 
this old man is all that's left. I gotta live with that. A convicted murderer who, unlike his peers, readily admitted his misdeeds, Red serves as the story's much-needed moral center. Let me tell you something, my friend. Hope is a dangerous thing. Hope can drive a man insane. Number six, Kurt Dusander, Arthur Denker, apt pupil. Boy, be careful. You play with fire. Somehow, this late 90s film flew under the radar. And for that, we blame David Schwimmer. Just kidding. Now, wait a minute. What are you, are you going to tell people I, I, I did something to you, Todd? Those that did see Apt Pupil saw a film dominated by the great Ian McKellen, who steps up to the challenge of playing an elderly man who is, in fact, a Nazi war criminal in hiding. It was something that had to be done. A door had been opened and couldn't be shut. It was the end. You don't understand. Although we hate him on principle, we can't help but feel for Kurt as Arthur as he is controlled by a teen, played by Brad Renfro, who threatens to expose his horrific Nazi past to the world. Everything they're afraid to show us in school. You were there. You did those things. No one can tell it better than you can. That's all I want. Kurt, however, is not a man to be trifled with, which we learn when his inner evil escapes his facade. And this is what makes him truly unforgettable. You won't be seeing me around here anymore. No. I suppose I won't. Number five, Pennywise, It. Hi, Georgie. Aren't you gonna say hello? A lot of people are afraid of clowns, and their rationale for that fear is that they can be creepy as hell. All they gotta do is cite Pennywise to back that up. Kiss me, fat boy! Made for television, this miniseries may have been largely forgotten if it weren't for the brilliance of Tim Curry as Pennywise the Dancing Clown. I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> Formidable in every moment, he makes the very idea of floating terrifying, before appearing in an old-timey photograph only to lunge at some kids in a heart-pounding sequence. Ah! I'll kill you all! One of his best moments has got to be when he's seen in a sewer and appears to be a kindly clown, all the while convincing a young boy to join him and die. Which is typical clown behavior through and through, right? Won't do any good to run, girly boy. <laughs> See you with your dreams. Number four, John Coffey, The Green Mile. You be still. You be so quiet, so still. The prisoner at the heart of a film that lives in the shadow of another on our list, it would be a tragedy if the Shawshank Redemption comparison caused anyone to forget how compelling John Coffey from this fantasy crime drama is. He the lucky one. No matter how it happened, Dale the lucky one. The very definition of a gentle giant, Coffee's fearsome figure soon gives way when it becomes clear that he couldn't hurt a fly. I hit Dale's mouse, your circus mouse. On top of that, it turns out that he's more afraid of the dark than we should be of him. Don't put that thing up on my face. Don't put me in the dark. I was afraid of the dark. Michael Clark Duncan earned his one and only Oscar nomination for his heartrending role of a man who is too good to exist in a world that ultimately kills him. I'm sorry for what I am. Number three, Annie Wilkes, Misery. Misery's alive! Misery's alive! Oh, it's so romantic! Oh, this whole house is gonna be filled with romance! <gasps> I'm gonna put on my Liberace records. The role that helped build her career we can thank deranged fan Annie Wilkes for the enduring presence of Kathy Bates on our screens. And that is most definitely a boon for the entertainment industry. My name is Annie Wilkes. I'm a one fan. <laughs> yes, that's right. I'm also a nurse. Listed by the American Film Institute alongside the likes of Hannibal Lecter and Norman Bates as one of the best villains in American cinema, Annie Wilkes' pedigree is without question and earned Bates an Oscar for Best Actress. Catch this. Mwah! Alternatively kind and cruel in equal measure throughout the psychological thriller, 
any psychosis is best demonstrated with the infamous hobbling scene. Though her moment of quiet before the violence may actually be the film's most recognizable moment. Danny, whatever you think I'm not doing, please don't do it. Number two, Carrie White, Carrie. Stop it, Mama! <laughs> Stop hurting yourself, Mama! He's gonna laugh at you. They're all gonna laugh. A perpetual victim of both her domineering and dreadful mother, as well as her fellow high schoolers, Carrie is a quiet girl who seems totally at odds with the world she inhabits. It's nothing to do with Satan, Mama. It's me. Me. If I concentrate hard enough, I can move things. Brought to life by the supremely talented Sissy Spacek in this supernatural horror movie, her delicate and vulnerable portrayal is likely to make you want to save her from the awful life she leads. Mama, I was so scared. I thought I was dying, and the girls, they all laughed at me. At least she's gifted with powerful abilities. But when she's pushed too far, Carrie decides to exact revenge on her tormentors in a climax of pure anger and gore. <laughs> The act may be visceral and disgusting, but it's also easy to lose yourself in. And that's why we'll always remember Carrie. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Come to take one of us away, haven't they? Which one? No fair. No fair, no fair. <laughs> he wants you too, Malachi. Number one, Jack Torrance, The Shining. Wendy, I'm home. Starting out the movie as a man who counts himself lucky to have gainful employment, Jack's descent into madness is arguably as magnetic as anything ever put to film. Mouse come out, wherever you are. Looking out a window has never seemed so threatening. Ordering a drink has never seemed quite so delightful. And voyeurism never so mortifying. Once the insanity overcomes him, and Jack begins to pursue his family with deadly intent, we see him clearly relish in the violence he wreaks. And if we're being totally honest, we kinda do too. Here's Johnny! Do you agree with our list? Who's your favorite Stephen King movie character? So we got the old rust bucket tonight. Uh -uh -uh -uh. Yeah. You wanna watch what you call my car? It's real sensitive. For more compelling top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Oh, come back anytime. Bring your friends.